Hello class, welcome here to the Mani Karnika Ghat along the Ganges River in Varanasi once again. Um, I realize that we haven't talked much about death and burial rituals and uh, this is a perfect opportunity to talk about the very real practices of, um, of cremation surrounding the very real uh, issue of death in Hinduism. Uh, Hindus prefer cremation over other practices such as burial, for example, because it's believed that the body itself contains impurities. Uh, when, once one dies, one passes on to the next life, therefore the body is no longer necessary, and in fact it can kind of hold us down in this world of samsara. So once one dies, one wants to release all of these impurities so that you can either ascend into moksha or you can pass on to the next life. Uh, this ghat here, the Manikarnika ghat, is one of the oldest ghats in all of Varanasi, if not all of the world. There are many myths surrounding this ghat. Uh, it goes back to uh, perhaps even Lord Vishnu himself. It's believed that Lord Vishnu created this ghat uh, however many thousands and thousands and thousands of years ago. It's been in working order since at least the 5th century. That's 1500 years. We actually have documented records of people being cremated here at these ghats. Uh, another myth surrounding this uh, includes Lord Shiva and his wife Pravarti. Uh, Mani Karnika means an earring and the story goes that Pavarti wanted to keep Lord Shiva here with her so that he wouldn't go uh, gallivanting all around the world with his devotees. So she made up a story about losing her earring along the shores of the Ganges. Full well knowing that if he stayed, he would never find the earring. It was kind of a trap to keep him here. So hundreds of people every day migrate or pilgrimage to this very spot to be cremated. It's thought to be the most sacred and holy thing that one can do as a, a, a form of last rites into death. Um, the families will come with and uh, first the body is purified in the Ganges River, is let out to dry for at least 30 minutes, and then they create a cremation or funeral pyre where the body burns for hours on end before the ashes are then dumped into the Ganges River. Uh, the last thing I'll say is that uh, you may see some photos or video clips of bab babas or sadhus around town here or other places in India who choose to put like a white substance either on their foreheads or all over their body. And you may not know, but often, not always, but often, that is cremation ash itself. It's a constant reminder of one's own futility, one's own temporary nature. It's a reminder of death that we are all facing at some point in our lives. And it's a reminder that we should be focused on creating good karma and, um, you know, uh, understanding that we have a, a limited time here in this life so that we should use it well uh, to the self and to others. So we will talk about many other rituals, of course, but again, um, this is just a, a fa fantastic opportunity for you to see uh, cremation in its most sacred form. I'd like you to take note of a few things while watching the remaining part of this video here. Uh, in the foreground, right at the base of that flag in the uh, foreground there, you can see a orange wrapped uh, corpse. This is um, the family will wrap their loved one in these orange cloths, take them down to the Ganges River, dunk them uh, into the Ganges River, which is thought to be purifying itself, and then leave them out to dry for about 30 minutes, after which they are carried up. If you can note on the left hand side, the smoking um, areas there, they're built on these uh, cedar wood piles or pyres and then are lit and the cremation itself takes about four hours. Meanwhile, the family will walk five times around the body. And you can actually see that happening on the left right now uh, because it's believed that the body is returned to the five elements of the earth itself. The last thing I'll say is that uh, it is believed that if you are cremated at this ghat in particular because of all the religious significance attached to it, that you go directly to moksha. Uh, it's like a free pass. Uh, you are no longer bound to the world of samsara. The only people who are not cremated, um, there are three groups of people. Children, because they are believed to be uh, impure, or I'm sorry, free, of pure, free of impurities. Uh, pregnant women, because they contain a child who are, uh, is considered pure. And then those bitten by a cobra. Um, so all others are cremated here at the God. So um, yeah, I hope you got something out of that. Thanks.